Last year, I tried the M1 Mac Mini for the first time and it was the worst experience I've ever had with a Mac. In fact, I might even say it's the worst Mac that Apple has ever made. So when the M2 Mac Mini was announced, I knew I wanted to give it another shot to see if Apple could recover from its mistake. So last year, while converting my Macs to Apple Silicon, I decided to try the M1 Mac Mini and see how performance compared to the Intel iMac I just sold. I kept hearing people sing the praises of Apple Silicon and say that even the M1 chip was super powerful compared to Intel. I quickly realized that the M1 chip was way underpowered for my needs and it wasn't a good fit for 4K video editing or other graphics intense tasks. I wasn't surprised by this and I didn't hold it against the Mac Mini because I realized that this is Apple's entry level desktop with their entry level chip. But what I was surprised by was all the issues I had with external monitors and Bluetooth devices. I was regularly having monitors cut out and have a fit when waking the computer up from sleep, and Bluetooth was choppy, causing issues with my mouse and keyboard, making basic tasks very difficult. I made a video about this, and a lot of people told me I was doing it wrong, and I just had a bad cable, or bad monitors, or needed to get a different mouse, but I'd never had any of these issues before with other Macs on the same peripherals. So I was convinced that it was an issue with first generation hardware, and that there were some kinks to work out in the M1 chip with the next generation. And wouldn't you know it, I've not had a single problem with the same exact peripherals on my Mac Studio over the past year. So when Apple introduced the M2 Mac Mini, I wanted to get my hands on it and see if the issues were resolved. And I have to be honest, I am blown away by how snappy the Mac Mini is for launching apps, checking email, using Zoom, and other lightweight tasks. I'm using the base model with the M2 chip and 8GB of RAM, so it's obviously not a fit for high intensity tasks like 4K editing and Premiere. I tried to load one of my 4K videos in Premiere and I could not get it to play back, even at 1 8th quality. I tried rendering out the timeline and I was given an ETA of 45 minutes and increasing. And while it was attempting to render out, the computer was totally unusable. The mouse was glitching and I couldn't use any other programs, couldn't even really check my email, and I didn't really want to lock up my computer for 45 minutes to an hour. On my Mac Studio, I was able to watch the same 4K timeline at half quality without rendering the timeline and with no proxy. But I wouldn't expect this task to work well on a $600 Mac, and I don't hold this against the Mac Mini. Overall, I'm actually very impressed by the performance out of the Mac. You can definitely use this Mac for light photo editing in Photoshop or Lightroom, or for basic 4K editing in Final Cut Pro. It's just not a fit for programs like Premiere, After Effects, or Pro Tools. But one thing I immediately noticed about the M2 Mac Mini was the lack of quirks and issues with my peripherals. My monitors, my keyboard, and Mac mouse all worked flawlessly and I've never had a single problem in my testing. I would honestly forget I was using a Mac Mini until I tried to open a Premiere file, but as long as I was doing lightweight tasks, the Mac Mini honestly felt just as fast as my Mac Studio. I.O. is really important to me, even if I'm just using the computer for lightweight tasks, and the I.O. on the Mac Mini has been extremely frustrating and limiting. You have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB-A ports, a gigabit ethernet jack, an HDMI port, and a headphone jack. The lack of an SD card slot is limiting for my use case, and I really wish it had more USB ports. If it had the same I.O. on the back with the addition of two USB-C ports on the front and an SD card slot, I think it would be perfect, and the Mac Mini would be a lot easier to recommend. As it stands now, if you're running a setup with two monitors, you're likely going to be using the HDMI port and one Thunderbolt 4 port to drive the two monitors. That only leaves one Thunderbolt 4 port for high power devices like an external SSD and two USB-A ports for things like an external hard drive or a webcam. Even with light tasks, this can be an issue. For my setup, I have two monitors and I'm using the HDMI port and one Thunderbolt port for both monitors and I'm using the other other Thunderbolt port for my audio interface to run my speakers. That only leaves two USB-A ports which are used for both of my hard drives, so if I want to use my webcam, I've got to unplug one of my hard drives and switch it out. And that's impractical, especially with the base model when you only have 256 gigs of internal storage, so you're definitely going to need some external hard drive. And having to unplug a hard drive just to plug in your webcam is not a viable option. 
And yes, you can always use a USB hub, but I don't think you should have to do that. I'm okay with using hubs for MacBooks when you're legitimately limited by space for adding additional ports, but you could totally throw some extra USB ports on the Mac mini. As you can tell, I don't like being limited. I like finding tools that allow me to complete my tasks efficiently. And when I started testing this Mac mini, I was able to quickly sign into all of my accounts with a password manager. We've all heard that it's best practice to use a unique, randomly generated password for each account, but how are you supposed to keep track of all those passwords? That's a problem that a password manager can solve. 1Password is my personal favorite password manager, and they've sponsored this video. 1Password gives you all the tools you need to secure your accounts, store passwords, credit card numbers, passport details, and other sensitive information. You can share your passwords securely with friends and family and conveniently access your vault with face ID or fingerprint unlock. And 1Password recently announced the ability to save and sign in with passkeys so you can eliminate the need for passwords entirely on websites that support it. I've already started migrating my accounts to passkeys and I have so much more peace of mind. 1Password is offering 25% off for new users so go to this link to get started. Thanks to 1Password for sponsoring today's video and now let's take a look at the value of the Mac Mini. The base model Mac Mini offers an insane value for the $599 price tag. We all know that Macs have a reputation for being expensive, but the smoothness and performance that you get out of this Mac is absolutely unreal. I would not hesitate to recommend getting this if you have a work from home job and you need to use it for things like Zoom, Slack, checking emails, and replying to messages. There's no denying that this Mac is an amazing value, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be a fit for everyone. Unfortunately, the M2 chip can be quite limiting when it comes to high intensity tasks and things that require a lot of graphics. And the only upgrade path for the Mac mini is to consider the M2 Pro chip. The cheapest M2 Pro model starts at $1,300, and for that price, I think you'd be better off spending another $700 to get the base model Mac Studio with the M2 Max chip and way more ports. I really think the best value on the Mac Mini is to stick with the base model. The biggest downside is the 256 gigs of internal storage, and it's okay to upgrade that to 512 gigs if you want, but you're gonna be spending an extra $200 just to do that. I don't think I would recommend spending much more than $1,000 on a new Mac mini. So you see how this goes. Apple has totally rigged the system to where it makes sense to buy the base model or just buy the Mac Studio. And I think that's the idea. They want you to choose between these two products. But if you're doing lightweight tasks and you don't need the graphics intensive processing, I am really impressed with the Mac mini and would absolutely recommend it for the $599 price tag. However, if you're expecting the Mac mini to be some kind of miracle computer because the M2 chip and Apple Silicon is just so amazing. I don't think it's going to do such a great job at handling 4K video editing or other intensive tasks, and I would consider a Mac Studio or a different option. So if you do decide to go out and get a new Mac Mini, one of the biggest annoyances with the setup process is having to sign in with all of your online accounts again. But with 1Password, all of your logins are saved and you can autofill them into the fields when it's time to sign in. It makes the whole process way easier. So I would definitely go check out 1Password at this link.